Please listen carefully. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 23rd episode of the Study Space Podcast, a show dedicated to helping students like you earn better grades, navigate your college journey, and become lifelong learners. My name is David, co-founder and lead content strategist at UniPlan. And my name is Natalie, content strategist at UniPlan, but for now I'm more like an intern. <laughs> Today we'll be talking about the worst habits that college students can develop and how to prevent these habits from forming before it is too late. Now, some of you may remember Natalie from um, one of the pre-med episodes that we had. Um, so introduction for her again, she goes to UCI. She actually switched her major, I believe. Um, is that right? From chemistry to biology? Yeah, for like the third time, I think. <laughs> yeah. So, you know what? It's never late. It's never too late to change your major, but uh, you're still, you know, intending on going to med school. So I guess that path hasn't really changed much, has it? No, it's just that bio is a more straightforward path than uh, chemistry. I don't want to spend five years in college or university. So, yeah. All right. Got it. So before we start, um, this is a question that we ask everybody. Um, Natalie, what's inspiring you today? My inspiration today is jazz because it makes me really happy. And I've been in a productive slump lately. So listening to jazz makes my brain kind of dance with creativity. It brings me back to the 1920s nightlife in New York. And it just makes me really happy. Okay, awesome. Um, yeah, so what's inspiring me today is my internship. So uh, we've been spending a lot of time, um, you know, going over... Well, I can't really speak too much of detail on it, but we're basically making a 3D printer. And so we've been spending a lot of time going over designs and, and looking over considerations and everything. And I'm really glad that I've been able to uh, work on this. It's been pretty inspiring to me because I actually get to see, you know, the fruits of my labor um, in a more tangible form because I know that a lot of internships, um, you know, the interns are kind of just there and, you know, it's great to learn and everything, but they're not actually making a super huge impact on the company. Whereas, you know, my project is actually going to be used in the future, um, which is one of the nice things about working at a startup because you know that your contributions matter um, a bit more. So before going into this, as we said before, we're talking about the worst habits that college students um, can develop. And Natalie, I'm sure that you have had your fair share of bad habits that you develop in college. Is that right? I think it happens to everyone who comes, who goes into college for their first quarter or semester. There's, there are certainly things we learn with time. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. It's always the first one or two years that's the hardest. Um, I know that it was like that for me in high school. Like I had to kind of figure it out. But eventually when I got to like junior year, by then I was just like so ready for everything that even when I was taking, you know, three times the amount of AP classes I was taking before, it seemed totally doable to me and it even seemed easier than the previous years. So yeah, I think it's just a matter of, of getting the hand, uh, a hand on it and, um, you know, and being it, able to manage your time. And it's a lot of time management as well, as you said. So, which leads us into our first topic, which is procrastination. <laughs> yeah. So you, you can go ahead and start on that. So for me, um, my first quarter at uh, UCI, I took a calculus 2B, which is math or calculus 2 uh, for other schools and I took biology as well as um, my first class in my general chem series and I definitely overloaded I think in my first quarter at UCI which is terrible because I couldn't um, I couldn't manage my time or my my work habits very well so I ended up not like clutching for those grades I ended up with all A minuses thank god but it was a very very close call to being a B or B plus. Yeah, and um, <clears throat> so I mean, why why do you think it was such a close call for you? Like, what really happened? I think it was because, especially for my bio class, I did not kept I didn't not I did not keep up with the reading. So he would assign or the professors would assign me uh, some chapters I would read every day, but I thought I could do it be right before the test, like the midterms or the finals, but I ended up just not being able to do it. And I relied on their lectures, which as I've come to learn is not very good for test taking because they base their tests on, on the textbook more so than their lectures, if that makes sense. Yeah, so I mean, <clears throat> I've had my fair share of struggles. Um, 
definitely first semester I had a lot of problems with time management and and um, developing really bad habits. Um, I know that <clears throat> for me personally, I don't know if this is a problem for you, Natalie, or if it's a problem for other people, but the problem that I have is actually not that like I don't have enough time to do things. It's that I have way too much time. And then I just say to myself, oh, you know, I have more than enough time. I can finish it at the last second. It's such a quick and, and simple task. I don't even look at it, right? And so I get into the habit of, of kind of doing that. And then what happens is when the deadline actually hits, I'm like, holy crap, there's a lot more in here than I thought I needed to finish. And I start rushing and rushing, and then I end up doing the homework assignment or the project or whatever it is really, really poorly. And so... I feel like that's a, a big problem for me. Is it a problem for you? Um, definitely not, considering that I'm a commuter and anyone who knows traffic in Southern California knows that it takes way too long on the 405. So I would go home at five, which is peak traffic hour. So I would just have to stay on the freeway for like an hour to get to my house. And that took up a lot of my time. Commuting was such a big um, energy uh, drain. So for, especially for my first quarter when I'm not used to it, definitely it was, it's easier now because I'm used to driving the distance and just waiting my car, wait it out. But every second to me was precious and I definitely used it in some way. Maybe not on the correct assignment, but I definitely used up all of my time. That's interesting. See, I mean, uh, obviously I live on campus, so maybe, maybe that's one of the issues for me. Um, I had all the time in the world because I was basically just 100% focused on school. I didn't really have anything to do outside of that. It's not like I could, you know, like go home or anything or or see my family or even yeah. like hang out with friends. I mean, like, yeah, I'd see friends around on campus and everything and, you know, we'd hang out um, occasionally. But like, it's not um, it's not something that's super distracting because even if I did was hanging out with them, we were all in kind of like a, a studying environment and everything. So it wasn't you know, that big of an issue for me. Maybe, maybe that's, maybe I, that's it. I think that's the difference between our two campuses. I think UCI is more relaxed in terms of our social life. I definitely spent quite a few hours sitting with my friends at the boba shop and not doing homework. So I, yeah, I think that was kind of a big difference between our schools. I know you, um, no, sorry, JSU is very academically inclined and very, um, competitive in that area, whereas UCI is not so much so. Right. Yeah. I mean, we had Joey on the podcast uh, a week ago, and he was telling us about, you know, how much time he spends studying. It's it's no like it's no joke. Like JHU is really hard, especially if you're a pre med. Um, right. Personally, it hasn't actually been like extremely difficult for me. Like not consistently. I'd say that there were definitely moments where I was like, oh my god, like am I going to be able to finish this? But you know, most of the time it wasn't extremely bad. There were, it's definitely hard. They, don't get me wrong. Um, but I didn't have the, the problem of competition. Um, engineers in general don't really care about, you know, competing. We're all just there and we're just there to pass. And, you know, even if you graduate with a, you know, 3.0 GPA, it doesn't really matter. You, there's not really too much of a difference between you and the guy that graduated with a 4.0. So right. <clears throat> that's the good thing about um, my major, but yeah, I mean, I, I think what works for me is I get into the habit of saying I don't have enough time um, to do things. And that's what really gets me working productively. So what happened was um, I actually started doing my homework earlier on in the week. So, you know, like I, I have a lot of um, classes on Monday and then right after those classes, you know, sometimes I'd be like really tired and I just want to take a break and, you know, be like, oh, I can do this, you know, later on in the week when I have less classes. No, that's a terrible strategy. What I ended up doing that worked is I said, okay, I'm going to try to finish as much homework as I can on Monday and Tuesday when I have my most classes so that when it comes time for Wednesday and Thursday, I can work on, you know, like that one super hard problem that I wasn't able to figure out. And I was able to check over my answers with my friends and everything. And so that became a habit for me. Finish stuff early on so that later on you don't really have to worry about it and you can just kind of take your time and if something does come up, for instance, right? Like, I don't know, some maybe your professor will clarify that this happened to me. Maybe your professor will clarify that one of the bonus questions wasn't actually a bonus question. <laughs> that happened to me and I was like, oh my God, I need to do it. But luckily I already I had already finished everything else. So yeah. that one question for me wasn't a super huge deal because I was like, oh, I can knock this out instead of having it be another problem that I had to deal with. 
um, yeah. you know, that Thursday before I had to turn it in. So what are, what are your yeah. thoughts on that? Well, for me, um, after my first quarter, after that disastrous quarter, I learned to better study and better spend my time studying. So I took another biology class in my second quarter, which is the whole premise of the whole class is to memorize the book. That's what he tells you on the first day of your on the first day of class is to memorize the book like it's the back of your hand. So that's what I did. So I would make it a point for me to sit at my at my desk at home every night read over the read over the chapters and take notes and then when i'm done with the notes i'll rewrite it and that would happen what would happen every like every day basically so that's such a striking difference from my first quarter my first quarter i didn't even read the book i just pushed it off until the very last second and then i didn't have time to do it so then i just ended up um, abandoning the whole idea and just going off the lecture slides, which is very bad. But definitely second semester or quarter was such a, a better time for me to study because I made it a point to sit down and to study and not to go anywhere except look um, look at my textbook. And that was it. See, now that's interesting because <clears throat> like I said, we had Joey on the, on the podcast the other week and keep in mind, he is a neuroscience major. So take this with a huge grain of salt. So he may have some different study strategies that he uses, but he actually said that he didn't need to memorize much and he would actually focus more on applying stuff rather than, you know, just memorizing. So I think like, that's a very mm -hmm. good uh, strategy. Sorry to interrupt you, David. Yeah. As um, an ex-chemistry major myself, I would, I love to apply. I love to understand the root of every problem and as um, physical science majors know, every problem for us is unique because if you change such a, like just a tiny factor in the problem, it becomes a whole different problem with a different set of rules, et cetera, et cetera. But for bio majors or bio biology class, all you have to do is really know the material and there's nothing to do outside of that. That's, I took ecology and like molecular biology my first year and that's actually all i did it was just memorize and there was n you couldn't get away from memorizing you couldn't apply anything that's that's very interesting see i mean obviously i think i think the conclusion we can draw here is that it depends on the class right it depends on the school too i guess but Definitely. yeah mainly on the class like yeah i mean maybe, mainly maybe on the professor <laughs> right yeah no <laughs> definitely do make the test yeah it 100% depends on what, you, what your professor does and sometimes you'll you'll fail the you know the first test and then you have to learn from that and so it actually becomes impossible for you to really like improve yourself because you got unlucky um but you know in the end um hopefully you st you're still able to salvage a grade and hopefully your professor does something lenient like drop you know the lowest test score or something not common not common but the thing i learned about that is even well at uci at least we have lectures that are 400 people each these are our general lectures right and what the professors would do is they would curve so every time they curve they would take the average and you know some half of those kids half of the kids in those classes they don't even study so doing better than average is easier than you think and you just need to put in that extra effort to be extraordinary if that makes sense yeah that's that's definitely interesting um I do have a comment on that though. If you try to do that at certain schools, it gets a lot harder. <laughs> I mean, right, because then like, UCI is, like I said, yeah. a lot less competitive than JHU. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah. Sometimes it's just like I mean, I know a few valedictorians that go to JHU. It's not, it's not an easy environment. Everybody in there is really smart in high school, and when it comes to college, it doesn't change much. I mean, they're still really motivated and stuff. So yeah, that's definitely a point to keep in mind. But this is definitely like a, a small fish in a big pond versus a big fish in a smaller pond huh yeah no definitely it's um it's interesting but back to the point of you know bad habits um procrastination really really bad habit and i think that applies to pretty much every class i mean whether it's memorizing or, or learning how to apply stuff you should be doing that weekly um, yeah. you should be doing that on a regular basis yeah. and memory builds as you practice so i learned in psychology if you practice um recalling something that 
network of neurons in your brain, they will get stronger. Their connection will get better. So when you take, you're taking the test, it will become a lot easier for you if you practice daily. Right. <clears throat> it comes memorizing, of course, but yeah. Yeah, so the second point we have is skipping lectures or being late to lecture. Um, Natalie, do you want to talk about this a little bit? I think we both have very funny stories when it comes to this topic. So for me, um, my first quarter, as I said, was a rough quarter. Uh, first, my one of my the first class I took was calculus, which was eight in the morning. So if you know anything about Calc 2, it's a super boring class. And at 8 in the morning, as a commuter, I'd have to wake up at 6 in the morning to get ready and to beat that traffic and to get to school on time. So I would be sitting in my class, super sleepy, listening to this boring guy lecture in this crazy accent. So I ended up at the end, I kind of started sleeping in class a bit or skipping a bit. So I wasn't paying attention at all. But luckily, my calc, uh, my calc teacher in high school was super good, and he covered like 75% of the material taught in Calc 2. So I was able to clutch that A-, minus. but yeah, <laughs> that was super rough. Yeah, that's a that's a really good point you make. I mean, you said your story. Um, I mean, my story is pretty interesting. I mean, um, there was one time I had to skip class. I never skip class. Like, I'm a really good student when it comes to actually attending class. Even if I know that the class is going to be useless. Now, this wasn't the case during COVID. I actually started skipping a lot of online classes, um, which is bad, but I knew it was going to be pass fail, so I didn't really care. Probably a bad habit. Probably a bad habit. But um, like I said, it didn't matter too much at the time. But I'm definitely going to get back into you know my game during fall because they are going to be graded. Um, I never skipped class much. And there was one week where I got really, really sick. So I remember that night. It was, uh, it was Sunday. And I just came back from having hot pot and my throat just started swelling up. I don't know if it was the hot pot or if I was sick before, but I like, I couldn't even talk. Like it was really, really bad. It, I felt a huge, like, it felt like, um, I had a huge, like pimple in the back of my throat. I don't know if that's a good analogy, but it was, it was pretty terrible. And I felt, I felt like, you know, I just didn't want to do anything at all. I couldn't even move. I was pretty much bedridden when I woke up in the morning. Like my alarm went off and I was just so dizzy. And I decided that day I wouldn't go to class. Um, I just stayed in and I tried to catch up on my own, but I felt so miserable. I didn't want to, didn't even want to do anything. Now I'm not encouraging you guys to go out and, you know, like not skip class when you're sick. I think you should. Um, I don't regret doing that at all, but it did make me realize how much I fell behind because I didn't attend those lectures. Um, I took a writing class, especially, and for humanities and writing classes, I don't know how it is for you, but for me, that was devastating. Like, it was really devastating. I I didn't know what the heck was going on. And so when I came in um, the, the next day, I was just like, oh, professor, like, what did we cover? And he just went over a huge part of the book we were reading. I think it was Julius Caesar. Um, Great and book. I had, yeah, great book. And I had no idea what was going on. And we had an essay that was due like the next week. So I was like, oh my God, I'm so behind now. A day in college is a lot. A day in college is equivalent to probably like, like I, a week I'd say like in a high week. School. Yeah. yeah. Maybe a week. Yeah. yeah. Maybe a whole week in high school. That's, that's how fast it is. So you don't want to miss even a single day. And so even for the, it. yeah, I even have for the, for you. Mm -hmm. yeah, what's up? How do you find when you're really, really tired? I'm because we have those days, you know, when yeah. you still want to wake up sometimes because you're so stressed. How do you find the motivation to go to class? Yeah, so that's a good question. I mean, I'm always motivated by, you know, just wanting to do better. Um, I don't know what it is. I can't really explain it. It's not like I I picture one thing and that makes me, you know, motivated. But it's just. It's just kind of like instinctual, right? I'm like, okay, right. if I don't do this, if I don't go to this lecture, I'm going to miss out on a lot. I'm going to miss out on some instructions, on information. I'm not going to be able to do my homework if I can't do my homework. Probably going to fail the test if I fail the test. You know, like it's this little slippery slope thing. But I, I try to encourage myself to always mm -hmm. go because one class makes a difference. It's it's all, all your all your college classes are just a series of little lectures, right? So even if you miss one, that's, that's a pretty big deal. Like you don't think of it uh, uh, so much at the time, but it does become a big problem. Um, yeah. So I skipped that 
skip that day and that was not good i will never do that again unless i am like unless i have like covid or something i <laughs> but i hopefully like knock on wood i hope that doesn't happen but that was really bad and um it just goes to show you that you know if you're not sick and you're skipping class you are missing out and you don't even have a good excuse for it in my opinion um that brings us to another point though i am someone who is always late to lecture this is this is a huge problem <laughs> i'm i'm always late for lecture i i know for many of my classes for some reason like i just have this feeling that like oh i'm i'm not i'm not too late i'm not too late like i'll make it on time maybe that's the same thing i have with uh, my procrastination but the difference is i don't actually turn in my homework yeah but i have a lot of problems going to lecture early and uh, not that it makes a huge difference to go to lecture early or a little late, but if it becomes a, a constant problem, I know that it affected me in my digital systems class because the professor in the first like five, 10 minutes of class would always go over homework instructions and answer any questions that we had. I'd always miss that. And so I'd have to ask my, my friends like, oh, what's going on in this class? You know, like, what did he talk about? And that wastes a lot of time, right? Because now I have to figure it out secondhand and they may give me inaccurate information. And, you know, if I have to clarify, I have to email the professor that wastes his time, that wastes my time. Don't try it. Like, please be on time. And I have a the very funny story about being late as well. This, is, didn't, this didn't happen to me personally, but I was there when it happened. So there was this guy in my general chem class first quarter. I guess he was having a worse quarter than I I was having he I think it was the first day of school the first day of lectures or instructions he missed and then comes second day he comes in 30 minutes late to a 50 minutes 50 minute lecture and the professor was mid lecture he came in using the front door so he came in where the professor was standing and lecturing and everyone just stopped and looked at him so I feel like being late is not only bad for yourself but it's also bad for your um classmates because their education is interrupted by your your responsibility so it's kind of like a social embarrassment thing if you're late so i think that's more motivation to be on time <laughs> interesting interesting story indeed um <clears throat> so next next point that we have is this is one that you wrote, Natalie. Um, not asking questions and not going to office hours when you don't understand. I am definitely guilty of this, even until now, actually. So I'm a very shy person, and I don't like to interact with people. If, if I could avoid it, I'll go to the depths of hell to avoid it. So my prof professors seem really scary because they're the dudes standing in front of the class giving information to you. They they're in a space of authority compared to you as a student. So for me, that was super intimidating. I didn't, I did not want to um, approach them or ask them questions. But I did want, I did a couple of times um, with my uh, general chem teacher. He was so understanding, so nice, and he took the time out of his um, research to help me. And once. Okay, he doesn't know my name, which is really bad, but I went in, I emailed him and I went in with my friend and I guess he just didn't notice me. So he wrote back to me, he e emailed me. He was like, I think you missed our appointment. Do you want to reschedule? The professors might seem intimidating, but they're actually very, very caring. So keep that in mind when you're very intimidated to go up and ask professors a question. That's, that's kind of funny, actually, that he didn't know your name. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was so sad. I bought him I mean, a cookie, too. I'm super salty about that. <laughs> honestly, don't even take it personally. I only had one professor that knew my name, and that was my intro to electrical engineering professor. He's such a nice guy. But he yeah. was the only one who knew my name, and that's only yeah. because I went to his office hours every single week in the first semester. It was, it was <laughs> so pretty cute. funny. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean... Professors have like what hundreds of students. Every ten weeks, he's they switch to another hundreds of stu students. So there's no way they're gonna remember your name unless you build a rapport with them. Yeah, I mean certainly, I, I think that you know unless you're like doing research with them or you're a PhD student, it's right. especially for undergrads, it's just it's not gonna happen. Like especially like you said, there's hundreds of students in that class. I mean, 
that's just that's just not feasible for them to right. to know. I I I think at JHU is a little bit better, but even then, like I don't think my Cal professor ever knew my name. Like <laughs> the dude did not know who I was. So, I mean, this is just like uh, obviously this is off topic, but um, you know, going to office hours does help with that. But the main right. point of office hours that I do have to emphasize is super super helpful. Um. Always ask questions in lecture. Um, I think that that's a little less helpful, like for me personally, because I think that sometimes professors don't actually like answer your questions too directly. But mm -hmm. if you go to office hours, that's like where I, I found that I got the most help because my professor would basically go through like line by line the homework problem and kind of dissect it for me and help me really like understand because he obviously wrote the question right like uh, yeah unless mm -hmm. he stole it but yeah all, all my professors wrote their questions so yeah i mean he he knows what he intends and so he wants you to understand his intention and sometimes that's not obvious when you first read the question so um for me as a stem major and just like as a student in general super helpful to go to these office hours definitely um, especially I, when mm -hmm. they write the test questions too and they often you know their intentions might be miscommunicated on the test but when you go to their office hours and ask on the homework which might reflect the test very well you kind of get a little bit of a head start yeah for sure um i think uh, another point that has to be made i don't know if this is a thing at your school but Aside from, you know, asking questions and going to office hours, seeking help in general, just from your friends and, you know, your peers, and also um, from tutoring programs. I know that at my school, there's this thing called Learning Den, where you can kind of just pop in and ask um, these tutors questions. And also, um, there's this thing called Pilot, where you basically uh, form a, a little group with a few other students, and you guys have a pilot leader. And this pilot leader is someone who got an A in the class, um, you know, quite knowledgeable about the subject and they're basically there to guide you and give you problem sets go over your homework with you perhaps just really be there to clarify stuff that your professor perhaps didn't go over too well and that was a really yeah. helpful resource for me definitely helped me pass um physics for one um for differential equations just got me some extra practice even though i kind of already understood everything yeah those types of programs they they were free for me i don't know i heard that there it's there are some paid programs at the ucs but at uci at least, because it's a lot I'm knowledgeable about. Uh, we have LARC, which is a learning assistance, a, basically a tutoring program, but you have to pay like $110 per quarter, which is not that much if you divide it by the day. But to like a regular college student, that might be a lot, when especially when you're struggling with finances. But we do have um, like major specific peer tutoring. So these are free programs for, uh, let's say you're struggling in chemistry, you go to a chemistry peer tutor and they're people who got A's in the class, obviously upperclassmen who are willing to help you and then like walk you through it, which is very nice of them. But I, I never use those resources. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if obviously you can't speak for this, but I think I think that sounds useful because I mean, obviously they're more experienced than you. They right. kind of have a feel of the subject material. They've taken the classes before. They understand what the professors are like. Most importantly, I know professors rotate, but some classes, you know, professors do stay the same. So mm -hmm. I think it's super helpful um, for those students you know, to you know help them, be helping you out. So I think that's, that's really um, the thing for me was that um, my general chem series was super new. It started last year. So a lot of people who took it aren't like ready to be peer tutors, if you know what I mean. So it's major specific chem. So not a lot of people take it to begin with. And it started very recently. So there aren't any resources or a lot of resources, I should say, for those classes, which is a bummer. Yeah, no, that does kind of suck. I mean, the new yeah. class is always the worst. I mean, yeah, for sure. You don't even have like back tests. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to take one of those in the fall. It's called Advanced Digital Systems. They just made it a few years ago. Mm -hmm. well, like, and by a few, I think I mean two years ago. The yeah. first year it was run, it was apparently terrible. And then the next year they improved a little bit, but it was still pretty bad. Mm -hmm. um, I hope it's better this year. I mean, third time to charm, right? But like, you know, these types of the classes, the only thing you can basically rely on is asking the professor for help, right? right? Because he made the class. I mean, in this case, you can't help your peers. 
you can't ask for help from um for help from your peers you can't ask for help from upperclassmen because you know a lot of them probably didn't even take the class so right. if it's a new class yeah definitely i would say um go to the textbook for me um i went i read a lot of uh texts for chem uh in my second quarter and that earned me an a that was instrumental in my in my um learning for sure text i felt no offense i love i love my prof but the textbook was at times a better teacher than um my professor and i'm pretty sure david knows which one i'm talking about <laughs> i do but let's not disclose that information um, yeah but he's super sweet but yeah it's just it's not it's something he can't help yeah for sure um next point and this is the point we talked about, we touched upon earlier, is not studying regularly. Mm. Now, I know this was a huge problem for me um, at the beginning of first semester, and I tried to remedy it unsuccessfully. I'll go over that in a second. But um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a huge problem. Even, even to this day, I, I still have this problem, I have to admit. And it's a problem for everybody, which is, you know, we kind of just study at the last second, right? We're like, oh God, like we have a week left, you know? And so you try to get in as much studying as you can, and then... You know, the, the worst thing to realize during that period of time is, oh, I don't know any of this material and like I have to learn it all in a week. That's really bad to realize. Um, and I don't know, I it's hard to tell sometimes when, when that is going to be. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that if you're diligent and you keep up with your homework assignments and you're actually doing them legitimately this is a huge problem for people they don't do it legitimately and then they're surprised when they don't understand the content if you slater it you're not going to learn it <laughs> yeah if you slater or check i mean i don't have slater or check but there's definitely instances where i didn't understand it and then like you know i was able to get help from like a ta or something and he just like gave me the answer i was like oh okay well i guess i'll just like that i mean that's it like that that's it and i have to try doesn't, to understand the answer doesn't right? that rob you of like because you know when you're doing a super hard problem but then at the end when you finally learn how to do it you feel super proud of yourself like does it slayering perhaps like kind of rob you of that self um self joy i would say yeah definitely for me i mean i had some instances where i figured out stuff by myself and yeah, it was really, it was really like rewarding. It was really, yeah. yeah, proud moment for me. Um, yeah, definitely. And yeah, I mean, the same will happen for you if you manage to figure out difficult stuff by yourself. I always encourage people to try it yourself first. Um, and that's a really, that's another really bad habit is continually asking for help as the first resort instead of as a last resort. You know what right. I'm saying? Like you should mm -hmm. be trying to figure it out by yourself. Consult your textbook, consult your notes, con consult the resources that you have. And then, as a final resort, ask your friends, ask your professors, ask your, ask go to office hours, stuff like that. I feel like for me, um, one of the best tips I could give is that do your homework, do your homework like you're taking the test. You know, like you don't have any notes with you, you don't have um any textbooks with you, nothing, just you and the paper and the pencil, and or maybe a calculator if the test allows it, and just do it. But if you get stuck, maybe introduce some notes. Or maybe introduce a textbook. Like if you get stuck after a few tries, that that is, you know. And then if you get stuck some more, maybe look up the answer, but not the solution, and try to work it out. And if see if you get that answer. And then if you're at your wit's end, you cannot do it anymore. Then ask someone for help, or search up the solution and try to copy it, but then kind of study it. Just don't mindlessly copy it. Yeah, I think that's good advice. Um, yeah, I mean, take those sort of steps. I think um, I think it really helps. It's like sometimes you'll feel really, I don't know, trapped, I guess. Like you have no other options, but you do. Right. I mean, you do. You really do. If you start thinking about it more. And that's a good habit to develop, right? Being mm -hmm. able to independently figure that stuff out. Right. It's really bad. I mean, um it's kind of just like i don't know if that's part of human psychology but just getting lashed onto things that you know make everything seem easier i think it's more of like a dependency issue <laughs> definitely 100%. yeah um one more thing when it comes to studying maybe sometimes uh experiment with the way you study i know for me when i was learning calculus three 
or chemistry, I would sit down with someone who was taking chemistry as well, but wasn't well versed as I was, then I would teach it to them. Because when you teach it, you're practicing and you're understanding the concept more solidly. And you're, in a way, explaining to yourself and making yourself understand it as well as helping someone else. And I think that's very rewarding. Yeah, 100%. Teaching is, I'd say teaching is the best way of learning. It's, right. People, people like often don't like to help people like, oh, you know, like, <laughs> it I, I like my waste time. my time. <laughs> right, exactly. My famous snake is coming out. <laughs> Yeah, but it truly is. And uh, I can speak to this. It truly is one of the best ways to learn right. because if you can't explain it to someone, you haven't learned it. And I know that's happened to me several times. Like, oh, I got this. And my friend's like, can you help me with this problem? Like, oh, I'm, like I've never seen that type of problem before. And so yeah. it helps me realize what I don't know. I try to teach it to myself and then I can teach it to them and we can help out each other. And, you know, that's like, yeah. that's the spirit of collaboration. It's that's how you learn, basically. Yeah. Too bad I don't really study with people often. <laughs> yeah. But the flip side to that um, is I did study regularly at one point. So basically for the first um, calc midterm, I studied basically all at the end. And I was like, oh, I got this. And then I actually, actually did okay. Like I actually did pretty well. Um, but I knew that something had to change for the next midterm. I was like, if I want to pass this next midterm, it's going to be a lot harder. It's going to be much more difficult. And so I was like, all right. I'm going to get into this mindset of doing it every week because now I realize that it might have been helpful. And so I did. I, I did the homework review problems every week after I finished um, my, my like, you know, weekly activities. I On the weekend, I had some spare time. I just, like, went through some problems in the book, studied a little bit. And then by the time the test came, I was like, ah, I can just, you know, I can just relax now, right? I did all my studying already. <laughs> my friends were grinding super hard and they were, like, spending, they spent the, you know, the two days before the test, they were rushing and everything. And I was just like, you know, relaxing kind of. Uh, I was sick at that time, though. I will say. So, wow, like, like I mentioned excuse. earlier. <laughs> yeah, but excuse. So, yeah, it's not a good excuse. But <laughs> I gave myself time to relax. I'm like, eh, you know, I'm fine. I studied beforehand already. Yeah, mm -hmm. I got a, I got like seventy percent on that test or something. Worst I've ever done in a college well, test. I think. So. I feel like for me at least, I I do that too, especially for my bio classes. I would study every day, of course, but then. Uh, two weeks prior to the midterm or the final exam, I would study intensely. Like I would read every page, copy it down on a on a paper, piece of paper, memorize every word, and then. But then, when I get to the test date or even the day before the test, I wouldn't have anything to do left. So then I would just sit down, watch YouTube, kind of unwind a bit, very briefly review my notes. But then that would give me kind of like the peace of mind I need to take the test because. By nature, I'm a very anxious person, and I think that kind of cuts into my ability, my test-taking ability. Getting that time to unwind is very key for me. That's definitely interesting. Not the case for me personally, um, but hey, I mean, you do you, right? If it helps you yeah. de-stress and, and everything. Taking it easy before the test did not work for me. I don't know what it is, but I think um, now that we've talked about the two extreme ends, you know, studying super regularly and then not studying at the <laughs> end, you know, not like you know, putting in that last bit of extra mile and the other side, which is, you know, not studying regularly, regularly at all, just kind of like, you know, slacking off and, you know, waiting until the last second. I think the best thing to do is to study regularly. And at the very end, you should take some sort of effort to go over everything that you've already reviewed to make sure a hundred percent that you've already, you've already mastered the content. And I think this helps for a number of reasons, but the, the, the primary reason why I think this is the best strategy is because you already know that you understand the content and you've been going over it. So there are no surprises when it comes to the day of, you know, before the test, right? Or like, you know, maybe the week before the test, you already know everything. And so you're like, I've encountered this material before, but that last extra review gives you the kind of peace of mind that, okay, I, re I really have mastered this content. And, you know, if I need to brush up on anything that maybe I forgot a little bit on, it's just like reviewing, right? Really? Rather, that gives me more yeah. anxiety as a person. I'm okay, by nature, I think David knows this. Uh, anyone who's close to me knows this. I'm a very, very anxious person. I it's very hard for me to sit still and kind of focus on a test because, you know, like the nerve and like the anxiety of test taking, it just overwhelms me. So I feel like studying right before the test doesn't really give me that peace of mind. It gives me 
uh, what if I didn't study enough? What if like I forget something and then I review it, but then I already know it. And then it just leads to like the snowball effect of intensely studying all over again, which is not a good thing for your mind. That's interesting. See, I mean, you're you're obviously more neurotic than I am. Um, <laughs> definitely, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's definitely interesting, right? I mean, I, I know that I've had a lot of people like you, and they get into this rabbit hole, and instead of, you know, getting right. sleep or whatever, or, you know, You just, just end up, like, spending the night reviewing, which is really bad for you, because you don't get any right. sleep, and you can't focus on your test if you don't get sleep. That's very important as well. <laughs> yeah, there is, a, there is a balance to all this. I would say that, yeah. I mean, for me personally, I remember... Some of the best tests I've done on is I have gotten a lot of sleep on those, but I obviously, you know, I can't, I, there's like, there's probably studies for this or something, but I can't say necessarily that correlation is causation. So, I mean, do what works for you kind of experiment around. Um, I'm, I know that every person is different and kind of has like a, you know, pre-test kind of ritual, but yeah, mm. I mean, do, do whatever works for you, but I'd say a hundred percent don't go to the two extremes. Right. Um, don't be way yeah. too overconfident that like, Oh, I already got this all down. I've been studying regularly, and don't, don't be a whole a slacker and just like you know save the holes of your studies. For, <laughs> that is so unhealthy yeah, because you're not, not even good. understanding the information. You're just memorizing it temporarily. Yeah, not, not good, especially you know for your mental health. Oh, okay, right. It's terrible. It's so much stress to do that. Yeah, and the final thing we have is uh, when it comes to activities, right? Because I mean, mm -hmm. you're a college student. You know, you do a lot of activities. I do a lot of activities as well. And we're all very busy. We have these sort of commitments. And one of the problems that I definitely had was I always made excuses not to show up to certain activities. Now, I hope my PI doesn't watch this, but there were definitely <laughs> cases where I was just really, really tired. And I made a lot of excuses not to go to my lab. You know, you could say that some of these are legitimate, but in my mind, like I know they weren't, right? I was like, oh, I need to study for finals, right? And so they just gave me the day off. They gave me, you know, maybe the week off. But I know, I, I knew that I could probably still manage to do the research and be able to study for my finals. I was just, you know, lazy. I wanted to, you know, sit sit in bed and just not do anything for that day. And um, yeah, no, it's, it's definitely a really, really bad habit to get into. Don't yeah. make excuses to show up to activities. I mean, there are legitimate, like, valid excuses. Like I said, being sick, probably one of them. Definitely. I feel like, for me, it's more of the opposite. It's more of over-involvement. I'm in my break, my summer break right now, so I don't have any school to do. But I feel like when school starts again, I probably might have to drop one of my activities, my current activities, because I don't want to spread myself too thin. I show up to every activity because that's the way I am. Like, I want everything to be perfect. And then not being able to balance school as well. Yeah, for sure. I, I, that's definitely a problem too, right? Yeah. Like, like we, we talk about, we always talk about the extremes. Don't be under-involved. And don't be over-involved. I'd say that the best strategy is to commit to certain things, a few activities, just a right. few, enough that you can manage and then commit to those 100%. Don't make excuses, show up to those rather than like, you know, taking on 10 activities and then not being able to show up to any of them or, think, or showing okay. up to all of them. And then just like not yeah. being able to do your homework. That's a huge deal, right? I think um, when it comes to activities, uh, quality over quantity, definitely. You want to join just enough clubs but hold very like leadership position in those clubs and make a difference in the in those clubs as well as as have enough time for you to kind of balance schoolwork with it that's very important for pre-meds because i know med schools look for leadership so let's say you are a pre-med student you're good at school so school's not a problem for you but your pro the problem with you is your social slash leadership kind of sphere so you join 10 clubs but you're just a normal member in those 10 clubs you're not holding any leadership position so it's better to have like one club that you're very committed to that you're maybe like co-president or your treasurer or your committee chair of that is definitely more important than spreading yourself too thin i think yeah no that's definitely that's definitely true quality over quantity is is definitely something that I've stuck to. I stuck to it in high school, particularly. I mean, I really committed to STEM club and Julian can attest to this, but I really put my all into STEM club. I made sure that I was able to go to nationals and um, senior year I went to state. And so I was really committed. I was president for two years. I mean, like, you know, not to brag or anything, but I'm just trying to show that I really put my time into this one club. I didn't really do anything else. Like I can't 
list, yeah. list off the top of my head anything else that I did that was like notable. Everything yeah. else I did was either trivial and I eventually abandoned it or, you know, I did it and I still don't think about it to this day. So that's like the one activity that stays in my mind and you have to find whatever that is for you. Yeah. Um, it, it should be something that you enjoy really, you know, yeah. like something that takes off your stress from your school. For David, it's STEM, but for me, it's writing, like writing about science. That's what I love to do. Yeah. I mean, uh, for me, it was it was STEM in high school, and right yeah. now it's uh, it's rocketry. I, I love rocketry. Yeah. It's it's really my one thing. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I mean, obviously, it's it becomes a problem when you start joining too many things, and then you kind of just right. lose track of everything. You're like, what is my goal, right? Whereas if you join yeah. one club, you know exactly what your goal is. You have like all that stuff laid out, and, and yeah. dedicate yourself to it. Yeah, aside from making time management easier, since you only have right. one activity to take care of. Yeah. Now, yeah. Because it's like your it's like your bread and butter, but it's also like the joy of your life. Like for you, you love to do rocketry, and that's all you do, basically, with besides research in school. And I feel like you find a lot of enjoyment because you're able to progress very rapidly, or you're able to see self improvement because you dedicate a lot of time to it. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to college, it's all about what you put in. Like what you right. put in is what you get out, right? And so. Mm -hmm. The more you can put into one club, the more that the officers will notice and other people will notice. And eventually, right. maybe you'll become an officer yourself. And employers will notice, right? That's the that's the right. best thing about all this is employers will be like, wow, you really you know led a team and you put in the effort and you learn a lot of skills. And that's that's really impressive. Yeah. So don't be shy. Like, honestly, if you want that position in that club, put in that effort and reach out to the officers. Don't hold yourself back. I know I do that a lot, and it's very hypocritical for me to say that, but don't hold yourself back with your self-image, I would say. Is there anything else you want to mention? I think that's uh, that covers it pretty much, yeah. like all the points that we've highlighted. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, awesome. So thank you for listening to the Study Space podcast. Um, we know that there are countless podcasts being published every day, and you've decided to listen to ours in particular. It really means a lot to us that you've given us your time to listen to two students ramble on about school. <laughs> The show notes with links and everything we mentioned in this episode for further reading and learning are on our website at uniplan.dev. If you want to show support, share the podcast, or tell a friend about it. Your testimonial to your friends and family is the most helpful thing that you can do for us. We're on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. That's it for this one. We'll see you next time on the Study Space Podcast.